Hello chickadees, today is Thursday, so this is officially day 7 of my, uh, since I last washed my hair, and tomorrow I will be washing my hair, tomorrow afternoon, after I've been out with the dogs, because then I don't have to leave the house, so um, that's important just because I let it dry naturally, so I then don't want to mess about too much um, going out in the cold. I don't want to risk a cold in the icy weather we have right now. <coughs> it is now actually already six o'clock in the evening. And I just wanted to show you the preconditioning tutorial of what I do the day before or the evening before to be precise I um, wash my hair so obviously you start off with brushing it I'll just pause you there because you don't need to see me unraveling so that's all unraveled so brush it and when you're doing this I'm just warning you up front don't wear your best clothes. <laughs> so last night, I must tell you, my head, my scalp today is a bit sore. Because last night I thought, oh, I'll try a new style for sleeping. Because normally I sleep with my... Um, my hair around my head like this um, or just in a braid but because I wanted them one thought oh I want to have my hair a bit more straight not always the braid wave in it then I'll sleep with a bun up here oh my god my hair my hair roots did not like that at all my hair is way too heavy even though i was lying on a pillow and i'm a side sleeper even though i was lying like this and the bun was sort of resting on the pillow here the sides it's all so sensitive <laughs> not, not much fun okay so for this please excuse me if there are any bloopers or mishaps or anything like that because I'm going to have my head um, partially upside down and I'll also be taking my glasses off. So first thing I do is my trusty aloe first, pouring some more into my little bottle here because I like the finer mist. This one, you have to check the bottle that if you buy it, some bottles mist really fine, others don't. Um, I think that will be more than enough. This one is one that doesn't mist fine. Um, I've had bottles before where the mister was really, really good, but this one isn't. So there you go. So first things first, I'll take my glasses off. I'll actually also take my jumper off, even though it's rather cool. <sighs> I'm not getting undressed, don't worry. It's all decent. Right, spray it on your head. I do need my glasses on. Spray on your roots. Not too much, just a little bit. You don't want it wet, wet, you just want it slightly damp. You know this from, no, in the curling videos, I did a lot more spraying. Okay, so now I'm going to flip my head over and do it from the back. And this is mainly to get to the scalp 
rather than the hair. Right. Now just massage that in a little bit. my mouth. Flip it over again. Okay, just do a gentle massage. Just get it worked in a little bit. This is like a pre-conditioning we've all, I've already said in the last two videos how good this is for the roots and the growth and that it prepares the scalp properly. So you don't want it wet so that you're running around with wet hair. I mean, it will be a little wet, but not so bad. I've got my wet brush for this here. I've just noticed I've bent my wet brush badly. I think I have to replace this soon. Just brush through. If you haven't got a wet brush, don't use a normal brush. Use a wide tooth comb. Um, I wouldn't advise boar bristle at this moment either. Most probably when this video goes up, it's past Thursday, so you'll be seeing the next bits as well. But it doesn't matter. Right, so now, next step of preparation. This is my coconut, aloe and castor oil mixture. Deep scalp and hair conditioner. Right. And I will post a video on how I made it as well. So no need to worry. So I'm taking quite a big blob here, getting it into my fingers. Right. And now onto the scalp and into the roots. And don't worry if there are little lumps of co uh, coconut oil in there that are a bit lumpy, the warmth of your scalp will see to it. So just keep going. You can use as much or as little as you think you need. If you have spots that are lighter than others in hair growth, put more on that. Don't be rough with your head. Be nice and gentle. As you've guessed, I'm going to leave this in overnight. And for the morning of tomorrow. But that is me. If you don't want to be doing doing this before you have to go out or for that long, then don't do it for that long. Main thing is you do it well. If you can't do it on a day, wait, do it then on a day when you're going to wash your hair and you're not going to be going out anywhere. 
because this is a two-step process. Because tomorrow comes the second step of the process prior to washing the hair. See what I'm doing is I'm just getting it in there, getting it into my scalp, onto my scalp, not into, onto my scalp, massaging it in. And I'm now going to, now I've done the top bits, which are easy to reach like this. I will now, oh, there's one bit I can still do, like that. Right, I'm going to flick my head over now and do the same from the back. I'm hoping you can see this. So I'm just taking lumps. And getting it on there. When I feel a dry spot where I haven't reached the scalp, and I'll do that spot. And I often forget the crown. Right. Now I'm going to brush my hair through again. Now I know it looks funky, but it doesn't matter. Did you know, just on a side note, did you know that hair does not like extreme weather conditions? I'm just looking what that was. I'm oh, nothing. Um, shadow. Doesn't like extreme weather conditions. That means if it's cold outside, protect your hair. I protect my hair, A, by braiding it, and B, also by putting it under a hat. I wear a hat outside. When I say hat, I mean a beanie or something to keep my head warm and the hair warm. It doesn't like the wet necessarily either. So if it's raining, I do the same. I wear protection. And I stick my hair into my coat so it doesn't get overly wet. It will still get, of course, air moisture. You can't help that. Okay. Can't avoid that. And in the summer, it doesn't like the heat either. I do have actually a summer routine as well. This is my winter routine. When it's cold, although this can be done any time of the year. Um, but I do use specific oils in the summer and deeper conditioning ones in the winter. Number one, because you can get away with it easier if it's cold. And I said you can wear a hat, people can't see. If you're oiling your hair or conditioning your hair. I haven't walked out with curlers yet, but maybe that will come too. If I can find a way to disguise those, <laughs> then I might even try that. Okay, so now I must say when I made this, I left a few big lumps in here. Right, and now I'm just going to go down the rest of the hair.
I don't do this every time I wash my hair. But as I said, in the winter, I do it more often than I do in the summer with this oil anyway. In summer, I use different oils. Just strengthening now also the ends. The ends are the oldest part of your hair and they need the most attention apart from the roots and the scalp where you're growing the fresh hair. It's the ends you have to take care of most. Okay, make sure these are covered all nicely. Brush through every now and then. this side got some drier bits here it doesn't have to be completely perfect just say I make sure that the ends are done well. And there are a few, you see, I, I could have done this creamier, most probably. But it works the same. Okay. Oops, banged against the table again. Back. Okay. There you go. I just want to show you, I didn't use that much. I still have quite a lot left. This will keep for a long while, as long as you um, seal it properly, it will last a long while. You don't have to put it in the fridge. In fact, I encourage you not to put it into the fridge. Rest of the oil, I'll just distribute onto my hands and arms. If it's good for the scalp, it's good for the skin anyway. It's all natural. I know what's in there. Right, and now um, I want to show you how I do the next step. And I've forgotten my pins. Let me just quickly get my... Okay, I have my little sundries box here. And in there is a shower cap and a hat that I also will be putting on. Um, I like this because it's, um, this one's velvet on the outside. So if you choose to wear a scarf or headdress as well, then this is ideal, but you can also get a sleeping, a breathing sleeping cap, or you can even use what you call it, saran wrap, plastic wrap, cling film, instead of a shower cap. Um, and I, you can use bobby pins or I use these because I have these from the um, vintage sponge roller set. That's what I use these for, remember. Um, I most probably will do one of those again as well because I haven't done that for ages. 
So anyway, so I'm going to use these and I'll show you what I do next. And this is how I often also sleep, just with a different hat, not with the velvet one. Because velvet causes friction, you don't want to do that. But if you're outside or if you're sitting around, let me just bring up the camera a bit closer so I can see. Okay, this is not where I normally have my parting, so let me just get to my normal parting so my hair lays as it would do normally somewhere around there okay now as you see i always as you've seen me on youtube i always have my hair going to my left hand side so i'm just going to brush my hair out make it easy manageable I think I'll stand up for this. Okay. I will get on, uh, we'll do another video, I'll do a tips video and talk about headdress and scarves and things like that. I have one knot in here and I can hear it. Not that I can feel it, it must be a tiny one. I'm slowly moving down. Here we go. There, it's gone. All right. So, now what I do. Oh. Is I take my hair lay it across like that as flat as possible and that didn't quite work out so do it again brush from the back brush from the side this takes a bit of practice and sometimes it works immediately sometimes it doesn't okay I like it over my ears right now I'm going to use a pin, keep my glasses on. Okay, when I say use a pin, make sure that the pin end shows out. Okay, this is just to secure. Use as many or as little as you want. this the wrong way around didn't I? Oh no it'll be all right. I'll just go around like that, around, 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 around. see that that's all nice and flat. hope you saw that coming round again. Depends also what length hair you have. You might only just do half a head, depending, as I said, on the length. As mine goes round all the way, I'm going to just tuck it underneath that one. I can see the ends here that are sticking up, a uh, teeny bit dry. So I'm just going to add a little bit more oil, mousse, I'll call it my cream, my, my deep conditioning cream onto there. Right, now, put this over like that, now to the, now I'm going to put this back on, 
Ist aber auch sauber kalt. You can also saran wrap it now. If you want to saran wrap that tight, but make sure the pins are looking out. If you need pins at the back to keep it stable, then do that as well whilst you're wrapping. Okay. Now put my hat over this. Because that will keep the warmth in as well. The head heat will give it an even deeper conditioning. An even deep, deeper condition effect okay and this is easily washed so it doesn't really matter so now i know it all looks very weird now i'm taking my pins out i don't need these anymore There you go. And now just pull the hat over the plastic. You can't sleep like this, as I said, not with this kind of, not with the Velcro hat, because you don't want the friction. Just making sure the plastic is over the hair. Okay, there you go. The plastic is mainly there to protect the hat rather and to keep the warmth in a lot better. So there you go. Weird and wonderful. Nothing much to see. And you can sleep in this because it's flat and it doesn't it doesn't disturb you whether you're sleeping on the side nor the back. So now I'm going to leave that on till tomorrow afternoon or let's say tomorrow noon and then I'll show you the next step. So I'll pause, I will stop the video here and do the next step which will be the proper oiling. And remember that the Ayurvedic Indian oil we made the other day? I just refilled some of it into the small little um, in the small little bottle with the, the nip on so that it's you can distribute it better Finger. Um, and that's all I did so that will be coming on tomorrow noon or just afternoon after I've walked the dogs and then I'll be leaving it on for a couple of hours. Yeah, a couple of hours. And then we'll wash it all off. So, so much for the deep conditioning. And that's how I do it. Not every hair wash. And it depends on how often I do wash my hair. Um, I tend to wash it... Well, once a week or once every twice, every once every two weeks sometimes, depending on what the weather situation is like outside and depending on how dry or how greasy my hair is. Um, that's what I do. So I'll see you tomorrow. I'll stop here and see you tomorrow and get on to the next bit tomorrow and roll that up all into another video. Same video, second part. See you then, bye. Good morning, chickadees. It's the following day. Uh, I've been up and I've already taken the dogs out for a walk. It's an awfully rainy day. Um, and I haven't undone my hair yet so here we go what I did is I took the plastic off last night before I went to bed um, 
Now brushing it through. There you go. Okay, let's have a closer look. You can see the ends are st have soaked up almost everything. Can you see that? So you can see that's where it's needed most. And scalp, same thing. You see? The scalp is the first little bit there. Can you see that? I put loads on and that's all soaked in. All right, this bit has still got loads of coconut left. So now to the second bit. I'm now taking, oh, that's a good one. Where did I put it? Ah, hang on, yeah. I'll put it in here. <clears throat> okay. There we go. There's the oil. This is the Ayurvedic oil with the hibiscus, the henna, the amla, and all of those things in. Now, this will be quite a bit messy, but this is all right what I'm wearing. I'll just tuck in this bit, the T-shirt, because it's a lot messier than, oh, than the coconut oil. Not because, A, it's, it's more liquid, and also... Um, the herbs in here can stain. So now we're going to put this on and this is going to be <clears throat> mainly again on the roots and the scalp. And then I'll work the rest down to the tips. Okay. So let me just adjust the camera. There you go. Okay. So I'm just applying, can you see that? So this is squeeze a little bit harder on this bottle um these are all you can buy these bottles obviously but i just keep old cream bottles anything i can get the top off really i use um for this sort of application but with this oil what I suggest is that you select one bottle and keep that bottle always for that oil because it will also stain the plastic a little bit or discolour the plastic. And as I said, I normally keep the oil in the glass bottle. You saw me put it in and that's where I keep the oil. But for application, I fill some of it into the smaller bottle. Okay, I'm just massaging all of that in and smelling all like hay. <laughs> it's, it's an acquired smell and of course the olive oil comes through strongly as well. You don't need to apply lots and lots. The main object here is to get it onto the roots and the scalp. Um, and that bottle, that litre that I made, that will last a long time. And I made some last year in Spain as well when I was on the RV. This is where I tested the actual recipe out, um, which measurements worked best. And 
Let me think, that was, when did I go? I went there in June. And I came back here in May the following year. So I was over there nearly a year. And I still have of the litre more than a quarter left using it in Spain with the heat and everything. This is one of the major oils I use for my hair and protection. Um, so I use it every week to also wash my hair more often there. So I used it every week. Now I've got to flip my head over like yesterday. So it will last you a long time as you see. And my hair then was, of course, also a little bit longer as than now because I've cut it, haven't I? I cut six inches off the other day. And if you have a scalp problem, as in an ailment or you're losing hair or it's thinning a lot then just put add put more on or more often you see i've still got quite a lot in here okay. right, let me just check dry spot here Let's brush the hair. There you go. Brush the hair. Okay, now I'm just going to take some into my hand. What's that? I don't know. It's not that much. And I'm just going to work some of it the way down. This oil actually works best if you warm it up a little bit um, that's why I put it now in my hand the warmth of my hands will warm it up enough sufficiently Okay, now I'm just doing the ends. They obviously needed a lot more than I thought yesterday.
but I have been working my hair quite a bit with the the roller sets as well. Not that it damages the hair, I don't think so, if you're gentle enough. Okay, I think. And by the way, in the in the lunar cycle right now, um, the 11th and 12th of February is ideal for beautifying, hair beautifying. So if you're going to do any treatments to make your hair look more shiny or, I don't know, sleek or whatever, or curlier, then those are the best days to do it. I mean, this always works, but the, when I say those, are, if you have no other time to do it, then you pick the best days to do so. Right. Brush through once more. As you see, I'm using the wet brush again. I'm not going to be using a ball bristle. You don't want your ball bristles all clogged up with, with oil because the ball bristles are there to spread your own hair oils and to clean your hair. So now's the best time whilst you're oiling your hair or before you wash your hair to wash your brushes as well. <clears throat> Just to get them clean for when you have clean hair. And remember, give them time to dry as well. I mean, I must admit, with this wet brush, sometimes I'm lazy and I just stick it in the dishwasher. Of course, after cleaning the old hair out. Right. So now I'm just thinking, how am I going to stick this up today? Um, as I'm going to be washing it, and I'm not going to be sleeping on it. I will braid this. I will do my braid and then stick it underneath my black cap. Whilst I'm braiding, this is actually also good. I'm, if there is some of the oils, I'm moving them also towards the ends. Smoothing out everything. And this is going to be a long video because, as you will see, I will put a bit on the end um, of how our ancestors washed their hair. Before they had the products that we have now today. So I'll put that at the end of this video. So you're actually going to be watching a whole section of video the deep conditioning prior to the root conditioning here, the strengthening and root conditioning, and then the washing. So, 
can't remember yesterday how long that video was, but I'm thinking it was around 20 minutes. This is going to be another 20 minutes, so that's 14 minutes. And the other video is, hmm, I'm guessing, also around the same. So it'll be a good hour's watch. <laughs> There you go. Bray did that. Oh, no, that won't stay because I haven't got a clip, have I? Didn't bring my clip. Well, just doesn't matter. Just stick this on and shove it up. Shove everything up into the hat, just like that. Into the free space there. And it will look weird and it smells a bit odd smells natural i like the smell but my husband says it smells odd smells like <laughs> like hay he says okay so there you go there's my my little brady dangle that's what we'll call it the dangle and so you see um it doesn't really, it doesn't stain, it soaks in super quick. That's the olive oil. Um, but if you use it a lot, and if you do drip, then it can stain. So don't, don't wear, as I said yesterday, your best stuff. It does wash out as well. But I wouldn't um, put my money on it, let's say it that way around, that it doesn't leave some odd brown or red stain behind depending on what henna you've put in and whether you put hibiscus in yeah so i'll see you later i'm going to leave this in now till the afternoon and then i'll be washing it out okay so that will be quite a few hours because it's still early in the morning Sometimes I leave it in a whole day and night. Or you can leave it in as long as you like. By the way, a tip in the summer when it's really hot and humid. This oil is fantastic for anti-frizz. And when you're going to the beach or when you're going swimming. As in, uh, especially swimming pool, swimming with the chlorine and everything. Then I do the, these two steps prior to going. And I make sure the hair is all covered so it doesn't get um, damaged by the chlorine and or the sea salt with, the, well, not the sea salt, it's not um, harming per se, but the combination of the high UVAs um, and the UVBs, but more the UVAs and the sea salt together that is what dries out the hair and makes your ends split and everything go dry especially if you have um, colored hair um, if you have colored hair if you've colored your hair sorry with henna then it's not quite so much of a, pro a problem because henna protects the hair but otherwise uh, it will damage your hair a lot quicker and you'll get scraggy ends and dry ends and they'll break off and split and frizz a lot as well okay so that was just a quick summer's tip i'll see you later bye bye hello guys so now it comes to washing my hair um, I'm now going to take it down then of course take the glasses off I hope the camera is not going to steam up um, too bad whilst in the shower I had to take the unplug the fan because the fan just makes too much noise and you won't be able to hear a single thing that I'm saying if I leave it on so the oiled hair is now I'm done brushing through it once make sure ensure there aren't any knots right and here we go take my glasses off so let's see let's get the shower running wait till it's warm enough 
you won't be hearing anything, but you will be able to see. So, let's go in. possible or not. Maybe I won't switch the sound off. I'm not quite sure yet. I hope you can see that. Okay, now I'm applying the shampoo to my scalp. All around. And I've got the shower doors open, so I hope you can see all of this. Right. Now I'm distributing it further down. Giving my head a good massage. You can also do this with the head massager. But when the hair is wet, I prefer to do it with my fingers. of oils on the ends of my hair. this video because it's paraben free and sulfate free and it has lovely herbs in it apart from the aloe vera so I'll put the details on in the box below so, out. So the washing part is now done. 
I don't do more than that, just make sure that the shampoo is out. Um, you will feel it, you can hear it as well, your hair squeaks a little bit. So now, I'm going to switch the shower off for a minute. Oh, I've made a nice mess on the floor out here. Right. Now it comes to the conditioning part. This is Aloe Jojoba Conditioner. I'm holding it upside down, but I hope you can read it. But I'll put a picture of that in as well. Okay, now I'm using quite a lot of this because of the length of my hair. I don't use conditioner every time I wash my hair. If I wash my hair every week, then I will only use the conditioner every other time, so every two weeks. Okay, now apply the conditioner from like the nape downwards. As you can see, it is a lot. All right. Okay, and I've got down to my ends now here, and it's not enough. So I think I'm going to be finishing this bottle. <laughs> the sounds it makes. Right, that bottle is done. Right, and now I'm just coating the ends of my hair. <clears throat> okay, so I don't condition the top of my head. I've done that with the oils, the oils and the henna and the herbal ingredients within the oil will have done that and the coconut deep conditioner, the aloe, coconut and castor oil deep conditioner will have already done that. But it's not quite enough for the ends of your hair, especially if you um, have long hair like me. Um, I did use shea butter before, but that is way too heavy. So I've changed back to this lighter version. Right, now it's time to get it all off. Back to lukewarm water. Right. And just rinse it out. big at all. <clears throat> right, now I'm going to change the temperature of the water to 
cold. Okay, what we want to do now is to seal the hair. Now that we've cleansed it, we want to seal it. And for that, we've got to shock it. Okay. I don't know if you maybe do that with your boiled eggs, you're supposed to. Okay, it's still coming through lukewarm. I'm waiting till it's cold. Right. And now I just put my head downwards. Run the cold water over my scalp. And my hair. Obviously, I don't like it being over my body. There you go. Let's get the shower back on its hook. And now I'm just getting some of the water out of my hair gently by just sliding down and squeezing it. So no twisting or anything, just sliding and squeezing. When your hair is wet, it's especially perceptible to breakage. That is why I don't do that. Just make sure I've got everything out. It feels like it. Okay. Right. Now, my old t-shirt. Oh, it's not mine. It's actually that of my husband. Anything but a towel. Okay, so now I'm just going to hang my hair into here. Okay, that's not long enough. I need to hang it into the sleeve. So I can take it to the side. Need the extra length of the sleeve. Now a light twist, just to get it up. And there you go. Hair has been washed. And now I'll keep it in here for maybe five minutes, maybe less, three to five minutes. Three to five minutes in here. And then I'll just take it out and let it dry naturally. So that is how I wash my hair. Give me a thumbs up if you liked what you saw. I couldn't see what you were seeing. So I hope it was all right. And comment below. Speak to you soon. Bye bye chickadees. Hello guys. This has now been, oh, I don't know. Let me think. Three hours, three hours in after washing. Okay, this is my hair now. It's still damp down here. I have not brushed it yet. Okay, can you see that? If I go a bit further back. Okay, and now if I come up a bit closer, I've got to bring the camera forward. I can't reach it. There you go. Okay, bend down a little bit. So this is what it looks like. 
three hours after washing. You can see there's still bits, this is wet. My hair takes about five to six hours to dry, depending on the weather conditions and so on. So there you can see. And I'll show you the ends up close. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> okay. Okay, still not brushed as I said, not brushed at all. This is out the shower, wrapped up in my t-shirt for about three minutes it was. By the time I got out, cleaned up the mess that I made in the bathroom. And three minutes, I cleaned up the mess took off my wet clothes, changed into something warm again, warm and dry. Um, yeah, so that's what it looks like now at the moment. I'll do a quick shot of what it will look like or what it looks like when once dry. Okay, so that'll be in another couple of hours or three. I think most probably a couple of hours the way it feels now. It's only the ends now. But those are the ones I don't want to damage. Those are especially the bits that like breakage and splitting because you mustn't forget the first mm, three inches maybe is a year's growth depending on how quick your hair grows. Some some people's hair grows a lot slower than that, others a bit quicker. So it's about two to three inches is all new and that's why you want to stimulate all the roots in your hair and make sure that everything in your scalp, so the roots in the scalp and the scalp is well nourished and then everything at the bottom is well old hair <laughs> very old hair well I cut about two years worth of growth off the other day um, but I had a reason to do that it is good to do that it is healthy for the hair I also want to mention I know people say don't cut it off don't cut it off um, but you do have to cut at least well, once a season, okay, so once every three months, even if it's just, I don't know, millimeters, just the very, very ends, because that will seal off the hair from the bottom. So then you won't get split ends that quick. Okay, so I'll be seeing you once it's dry and once it comes to brushing. See you then, thumbs up subscribe comment below oh another question I do have another question what do you think do you think now with some gray coming through because obviously I'm not a young spring chicken anymore should I color my hair or shouldn't I I mean as a teenager I used to use a lot of henna red henna I used to go completely red um, but I haven't used any hair dye of any sort on my hair for ages. Ages now. I can't think the last time I did. So what do you think? Yay or nay to the... Na uh, well, I'd only use natural colouring, of course. Um, yay or nay? Tell me below in the comment box. See you. Bye. Okay, my hair is now dry. Let's get to the brush. Okay, you've seen me do this quite a few times. Brush the ends first. Work your way up.
Right now I'm changing over to the mixed ball bristle and nylon. Let me just adjust the camera because I know you want to see this. Okay, move far back. And yes, I have to do this in the kitchen because it's just not visible up in the bathroom. That's not to no use. So there you go. There you go. Just want to show you. Zoom out. Okay, you can hear it sliding through. Oops. Sliding through. Even with the ball bristle brush. Really easy. Okay. Let me give you an up close. Okay, you see? It's sliding through really, really easy. That's how to wash your hair and brush your hair in case you haven't seen how to brush freshly washed hair. So see you soon. Bye. We stopped first on our ancient hair venture in Asia, where proper hair care has been practiced for thousands of years. Camellia seed oil and Chinese soap bean were used to clean and condition hair across Asia. Women from the Red Yao ethnic minority use fermented rice water as a hair treatment to this day. Next we go to India, the birthplace of Ayurveda. Ayurvedic medicine is a system of spiritual and medicinal practices that originated in India roughly 5,000 years ago. This form of natural healing uses oil blends and head massages to promote healthy hair growth. Dried henna was, and still is, used as a natural hair dye that also strengthens hair and increases shine. Our third stop is ancient Egypt. Castor, almond, and rosemary oils were used and were believed to help strengthen hair. Henna and indigo were harvested for their pigmentation and commonly used as a hair dye. And like ancient innovators, Egyptians also used beeswax for hairstyling. Now we head north across the ocean into the Mediterranean. Here, olive oil infused with frankincense and myrrh was used to condition hair and produce pleasing aromas. Proper brushing was considered by the Mediterraneans as essential to hair strength. We start Stop lastly in North America to visit the Native Americans, who utilized many natural tools for health and hair care. Aloe vera was commonly used to condition hair and protect it from harsh weather. Vitamin and mineral rich stinging nettle was used for its healing properties. Yucca root, also known as soapweed, helped with dandruff, and prickly pear cactus helped to protect hair from sun damage with its humectant properties. Many of these ancient ingredients and practices may seem to have been lost to history,